Happy Friday, everybody. It's Kate Richberg, and it is time for Free Tip Friday with BeadShop.com. Well, as you can tell, I'm here in my home studio. Next week, I'll be back uh, in the bead shop offices. But for today, um, here I am in my cozy little creative space. And it's great to have all of you all here. Uh, we're live. It's Friday, March 11th, and we're almost halfway through March, which is crazy to think about. But um, I see everybody is here. Uh, my goodness, so many people are watching. A big hello to everybody watching on the beadshop.com platforms and a big hello to people who are watching on the Great Bead Extravaganza platforms. I thought I'd share this in both places because I think you guys are going to love this stitch. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the new Super Duos we got in. They just dropped yesterday. So if um, we sell out for some reason, today, which we may because they've been super popular. Don't you worry, put yourself on that notification list and we will get those super duos back in. But we've got a whole host of super duos. So you can make this um, in a lot of different um, colorways. Uh, you can also use Tila beads, half Tila's, which um, are beautiful as well. And the um, project shows uh, shows both of those. So we call this the Pathways Cuff, and it's a piece that was started um, by a former employee, Linnea. And so we have some really great instructions. So great, in fact, that I'm going to kind of be following along with them today because sometimes my spatial relationship, you know, herringbone, for me, it's a lot easier to do in the round than it is to do flat. And so sometimes I uh, get a little turned around. So I'm going to do my best to do it exactly right for you today. But if you go over to beadshop.com and you go to the Pathways Cuff project, download the handout that Linnea did uh, quite a few years ago now. But it is really, really great, super clear, really great step-by-step -step, um, photos for you. So you will be able to follow along. I'm going to get you started on how to start it. We actually start it with a brick stitch and then go into herringbone. Then we do the stitching with the super duos. And I'm going to then show you how we close it off. And then I've got some really great photos that you can follow along to do the closure because you could close this in a couple of different ways and i'm going to talk about that as well okay so uh as i said it's great to have everybody here janice is over on youtube gita is over on facebook and they're doing some moderating and saying hello but let us know where you're watching us from i love that uh, whether you're watching us live or thank you if you're watching us on replay so just a reminder to everyone um you can follow us on our social um we had a, an amazing day on wednesday we did i'm going to slip this over my head as i'm showing you this card um we had a really fun time um i dropped a curated mix um the uh, sun chaser mix um, and we had some hints on that on our social so you can go to beadshop.com follow us on our instagram and if you do make any bead shop products projects or use bead shop products please tag us in your insta post it posts because we would gladly um repost those in our stories so give us that at beadshop.com um when you post that would be great also give us a follow over on the bead table it's our facebook group um we have some wonderful things going on there. A lot of questions go back and forth, um, a lot of problem solving, and a lot of great projects that people post. And of course, if you're watching on our YouTube channel, please give that a like and a follow and enable those notifications so you will be notified every time we go live, every Wednesday, Friday, and Friday at 10.30 a.m. Pacific. I thought I'd put on the necklace here so you can see it. I I could hardly see it. I need to put on my glasses. But this was um, the piece that I did on Wednesday. And um, thank you so much. You guys really loved it. Um, and if you didn't grab the kit, um, you can also just follow along, you know, and use some of your own pieces to kind of create your own sun catcher piece. But it was a lot of fun to create. And so thank you for following along there. But we made it through the week, everybody. It's Friday. So 
Um, let's get going on, um, on this project. I think you're going to love it. It's the perfect project for the weekend. You know, download this handout, um, get cozy wherever you are right here. It's a beautiful balmy, uh, I don't know, 70 degrees here in the Central Valley of California. So we've got some great weather here. But if you've got a little snow or a little bit of a colder weather time, um, this is a great project to cozy up or to stitch outside right on your deck. Okay, so let's take a look. I'm going to add this um, screen and let me, you can see I've been, whoops, let me get this back just a little bit, this camera, and there you go. Sorry about that. Um, let me show you some of our super duos that we've got, and then we're gonna get to this kind of mess that's on my beadboard here, okay? Um, we carry a lot of different super duos here at Bead Shop, and if you're like me, I like mixes, right? Um, and so, uh, we added some brand new super duos in mixes because this kind of gives you the best of all worlds. Okay. Gita's saying that this one is her favorite mix. This one is called night magic. I love this with the, um, with the kind of matte and shiny super duos to them. I really, I, I love these two, but we've got, and you can just go right to the website and click on super duos and you'll see them all there. But these are some of our new ones. This is Mardi Gras right here. Beautiful. Um, this one, I almost use this one, the Pinot Noir mix. I loved, um, this one's called streamy, like a stream with pebbles in it. I love, love this one is really gorgeous and it has i'm going to open this one up because i like it so much um let me do this look at how there's some matte and some shiny and some picasso and some transparent and some opaque i love it this would this is similar to raku but i think it's a little subtler um than the raku mix i really like it um this one I like too. It has one of them kind of made their way into this purple mix. This one's called marmalade, or as sometimes you say, marmalade. I don't know, whatever works, but the marmalade mix, again, a lot of these have that mix of shiny and opaque and matte and you know, um, opaque, I already said opaque, I think, and transparent, and, and I could go on and on, but they're really cool. Um, I don't know if this one goes in there, but that one might be, oh, you know what, that one goes, I think, in that one. Um, so let me throw these back. So this one's marmalade. And then it does have like a really good true orange transparent in there. It's kind of hard to see with the glare of this work light here, but there you go. Can you see that there? It's nice. Um, and then I love it. People are watching us from all over. A big hello to everyone watching um, us all over the world. I saw someone from Berlin. I know Leslie's here from the UK. Gosh, we've got, and of course, Gita is across the miles in Denmark. So we've got people. I love it that we're a worldwide international beading community and that at least here we can coexist peacefully. Um, let's think about those of our beading friends. There's quite a few of our beading friends over in the Ukraine um, and we're thinking about them and hoping for the best. I didn't mean to kind of bring it down, but I wanted to acknowledge how we are an international community. And at least here, when we're creating together, we're working together towards a common peaceful goal. So anyway, back to the super duos. Didn't mean to bring it down, but I think it's important to acknowledge. Um, this one here is called Copper Canyon. And you know how I love copper. Um, so this is a lovely one as well. So uh, these super duos, I think, you know, you can use them in a lot of different projects. You can ladder with them. We have a lot of really interesting projects that we do with super duos. And Gita, I love how you put up your hearts 
and your Ukrainian flag. You know, my um, Chris, my husband, um, his maternal family is Ukrainian and immigrated from the Ukraine into Canada. Um, and so we have very close ties there. So we are thinking and um, sending all of our good thoughts to our friends um, across the miles. Um, all righty. So let's take a look then at this project here. Okay. And I want to get a little closer down here so everyone can see. Now, as I said, go over to the Pathways Project. This looks, as my friend Mary says, like the dog's breakfast. So let me um, kind of clean things up here. Does your beadboard look like this when you're working? Because I'll tell you, mine does. So um, let me just use, I like these little triangles. Can you see I use these to kind of neaten my beads, but don't worry, they won't stay neat for very long, <laughs> right? We can't be neat and creative all at the same time, but there we go. That looks a little bit better, okay? A little more controlled there. So what you need for the Pathways Project, um, you're going to need some Super Duos here, and you're going to need some dot beads, some size eights. And the dots that I'm using I chose the um, 8-4221. I think it's the galvanized, might be the galvanized pewter. Um, I'd have to look up the exact name, but the number is the 4221. And that's what I, that's what I chose to work with. Andrea is creating a um, page for this particular project. Okay, so you will have all of the info on exactly what I used and what I made. Okay. So I also pulled a couple of other ADOTs though. You can shop our ADOTs. You can shop everything by color, but this 4270, I love how that looked with the Copper Canyon, right? There we go. Try and get that glare off of there, right? And then this one, the um, 308, I really also loved how that looked with the Pinot Noir. I don't know why I, well, this one I did with contrast. So you can see that these A dots really pop um, with that contrast. Let me get this a little bit further over here. So there we go, that's better. Um, they really pop with that contrast in between them like this, but, um, you could also have things be a little more monochromatic too. It just depends. So you need a, like I said, a tube of super duos right there and a tube of eight dots. Then you're going to need, bear with me here while I, um, while I just fix position, reposition my camera here. There we go. So there we are. That's better. You're going to need a button like so. And you're going to need, um, depending on how you close this, a button and some seal on. Let me just see if I can. It's a little hot. There we go. I think that's better. Oh, there we are. All right. Let me lift this a little. I need a. I need a production assistant sometimes, but this is pretty good. I think this looks pretty good. So I started my piece here. We're going to come back to this, but I want to show you how we begin the piece. So let me get these super duos out of the way. I'm going to put them over here in my triangle and we're going to come back and we're going to talk about closures like this. Okay. Um, and then um, we could use this. This is the Celadon Ceylon with the swirl button, or you could use um, like the um, crescent crimp here on the end would also look great. Okay. So, oh, I'm glad you guys like the colorway. I really, I, I think it's because I really love these matte. Let me lift it. It's kind of hard to see on the camera, but the purple are two different colors. It's very subtle on the camera here, but this is more of a violet or maybe a, a grape color. And then there's a bluer violet color here as well. Okay. 
So the way that we begin, we're going to come back to this, but the way that we begin this base that I have here, this is herringbone and brick stitch. So this top part, that's brick stitch right there. And then it goes into herringbone right here. And the way that we started this is we make a row of brick stitch, a, two rows, it's two beads, which kind of equals two rows, and then two rows of herringbone. Now you can decide how, like if you want, I, I thought about it, I thought about making this herringbone actually even a little bit longer, right? And you could go back and forth and do sections of like the herringbone and then a section of the super duo, then another herringbone section, then a super, du super duo section, whatever you want to do. Okay, you can kind of go back and forth with this. Um, and as soon as you understand the stitch, um, you'll be able to kind of, you know, deviate from the design if you want to. I'm going to cut away. This strand is where I, um, I ran out of thread. So I came in and I uh, wove a new thread back in. So this can actually go because it's kind of bugging me. So I'm going to clip it there. Okay. So the way that you begin, like any basic brick stitch, is I have, let me get this needle out of the way and get this needle. I'm using a size 10 sharps needle, um, and I like a sharp um, because it's short, um, but you could use a regular sized beading needle. And I also wanted to mention the project, let me put this up here just for a second here so you can actually see these are the finished cuffs right here and can you see how um the button um is the closure with the loop the macrame loop there and you can see that those cuffs this is actually half the size i did four columns of um, brick stitch and then four columns of herringbone and then I went into the super duo stitch this actually the ones that you're seeing on the screen right now those are eight columns of brick stitch so what I did so when you follow the pattern you would just do everything in half okay so I made this one a little bit skinnier and you can see like if I were adding it to my stack of bracelets um, this narrower one, I think looks pretty nice with what I've got going on here. Okay. So, um, to begin, just like any brick stitch, I'm going to start with two and two for a total of four beads. Linnea also on her handout, she does a stopper bead. Um, I'm not really a stopper bead kind of gal, so I'm just going to wing it. And I put this in here and I make a circle. Okay, with that. So I'm actually, when you brick stitch, you're putting on the first row and the second row, as well as the first column and the second column. So see here, I bring those two, and you've seen me do brick stitch before. And so I'm not gonna go like really belabor the 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 technique here because the handout is so robust um, that I'm going to work with, I'm, I'm going to work pretty quickly with this. Okay. But essentially I've got my two beads here. I've done that first row and I'm going to come back and you can come in and um, reinforce it just like this sometimes i reinforce maybe our buddy emily who does our seed bead school right i may reinforce actually even a little too much for emily but i i like to reinforce okay so here's this so now there's my brick stitch now i'm going to put on row number three i put my my strands on and you can see the the beginning thread is down here so you can't really do it wrong the result that you want are columns of beads that come across. So see those two beads kind of sit on top of each other like that. 
And I'm really going to make them sit together by needling up through those again and tightening it down. Emily does, if you go under our seed bead school, Emily has a really great tutorial on brick stitch as well. But see here, I'm adding that last row on and coming back through. Now, what Linnea tells us to do in the handout, and I think it's a good, um, that's a good um, way to do this. And as Shelly is saying, this is actually a ladder stitch, which is a brick stitch base. Um, so that's true. Thank you for that um, clarification. I love seed bead work, but I will tell you that I am the last person to um, get the terminology correct. Metal, yes. Wire, yes. Um, seed beads, I like to fly by the seat of my pants, literally. So I'm going to come back in and I'm just going to reinforce everything here. Okay. So now we're on to herringbone. So bear with me here just a second because I want to make sure I'm doing this right. So I actually have Linnea's handout here that I am following along with. I'll be completely honest and transparent so I don't steer you in the wrong direction. Now, here's for the herringbone. Okay, I'm going to pick up two right here, and this is going to be the top row of the herringbone. And I'm going to go through, needle down into the second bead. Can you see that there? So I'm coming in just like that. And then, whoops, my pointer. Let me get all of that out of the way. As I tighten this up, these two beads are going to sit right on top. And see how they kind of make a little V like that? That's the herringbone denotation. Okay. Now I'm going to needle up here if I can there we go right and don't worry if you know you want your tension to be fairly even and taut but also know that sometimes as you're stitching the stitch that you made previously doesn't tighten up until you begin the second stitch, if that makes sense, because your thread then kind of gets pulled and the tension kind of returns. Okay, so I'm going to put two more on. I'm going to do that same thing and come down that last one. And so now what we need to do is we do what's called an invisible turn. Okay. So I'm going to come in and because we want our thread, there's no place else to go here. Can you see that? So we want our thread to come down and around and back up through this bead. So I'm just going to kind of make a U-turn with my thread. So I'm going to go back and around. See, so that pops that bead right into place. I'm going to come up and up. and then over. Okay, so I've turned my thread around. And this will kind of, as I put in that second row, everything will even out. Okay, so now I'm going to add my next row of beads. Okay, so let me see, let me make sure I haven't um, yeah, and it's also known as, Carolyn, as the uh, endobelly stitch. That is correct as well. Um, that's what uh, Emily likes to call it also. But it's this basic herringbone that we do either in the round or we do it flat. I need to bring this back. Um, I have my round herringbone piece that I may or may not ever finish in this lifetime. 
but I need to give you an update on where I am. That um, herringbone rope, it's actually coming out pretty good if I, if I do say so myself. Uh, okay, so I'm going to do, so this is it. This is uh, all I, you know, this, this width, four beads wide. The pathways cuff that's in the hand up is eight beads wide, so it's a little wider. So I'm going to get two beads here. I'm going to go through, down that bead, and you can see, whoops, that's not how I planned it. There we go. And I'm sure there are those of you who are a little more dexterous than I with these, um, with this. But, you know, it just stick with it, okay? It works. And then um, I'm going to come up now through this bead and put two more. Okay. And I know there are variations. People are talking about variations about turning and stuff like that. I am following what we wrote on the handout so it won't get confusing for you guys. Okay. So here we are. So we've got our two rows. Okay. So um, now what we're going to do is we're going to start adding the super duos. So bear with me here just a second because I have to really think. We're going to start, let me show you. Can you see this little friend that's hanging out over here? This is our turning bead right here, okay? And these beads that are on the outside, these are the beads that we call our turning beads. Okay, so I'm going to put our first turning bead on. Okay, so here's my turning bead, my dot, And I'm going to go, I'm down here in this bead coming out of that dot. So I'm going to go up through that dot. Whoops. And of course, my threads are like, let's hang out. Sorry, let me. No, 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 no. Really? The best way to get myself out of this is to unthread that needle and just pull that away, set it outside of my design tray. You know, when, I think when we tangle our beads, or our threads rather, our first reaction is to, um, is to uh, pull your thread tight, right? Pull it tight. Don't pull it tight, okay? Just kind of get everything loose and you're good to go. Okay, so I put my thread through this one on the end. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add an A dot and a super duo. Okay. And I'm going to skip, you know, I'm not going to skip, but my thread is coming out from this A dot. So I'm going down this A dot and through the A dot next to it, okay? This first row is a little bit different because you don't have any super duos on here yet, okay? But once you have your super duo row, it gets even easier. So see how when I put this on, now my super duo is leaning this way. My next row, the super duos are gonna be leaning in the opposite direction. So now I'm gonna put on another A dot. We always put on an A dot first, and then we put on our super duo. And I'm going to go through this last bead in the row right there. Okay. So once I have done that, 
Let me make sure I'm in the right space. Yes. Okay. Let's see how that tightens up. Okay. Now what I do is I like to flip everything so I'm always working from the right so I don't get myself confused. So remember, first what we do is we need a turning bead. We need that turning bead right there. So I put my turning bead on. Remember how previously I went through a hole of an A dot, but now that super duo is there. So I'm going to go through the hole of the super duo. Tighten everything up. And if you have to hold it in your hand to kind of pull that line nice and tight, you can. There we go. That looks better. And usually for something like this, I hold it in my hand, but I want you guys to see what I'm doing here. So now remember, we add our A dot and our super duo. Okay. I go down through this A dot and up through that super duo hole. Down through the A dot, up through that top hole of the super duo. And I'm just choosing my super duos pretty randomly. Okay. Now, another A dot, another super duo. Let me do this color. And in your super duos, you guys, you want to make sure that, see this one, I knew it. See this super duo? How it's clogged. So you can either try and open that hole up which it may open, but a lot of times, see, it doesn't. So this super duo will live the rest of its life, not in this bracelet. I tossed it right into the garbage. That is not gonna work. But so I get another super duo and I go down through that bead. Now I flip. What's the first thing we put on? You're picking up what I'm putting down here, right? Um, I'm going to put on my turning bead. So there's my A dot through the top hole of the super duo. Okay, and I'm going to switch over on my next row uh, to my longer one that I've got there. Okay, now I put on my A dot, my super duo, go through that A dot and that top hole. Okay. So essentially, as you go across, you put on your A dot, your super duo, go through your hole, then come back around, add your turning bead, and repeat. Okay. So I, let me get this one. Let me do a few more. <clears throat> So we're here. Now I have to rethread this needle. I will, sometimes what I do when I work with, this is just KO thread that I'm using here. I'm sorry I didn't say what it was. You could do KO or HANA. I use black so you guys could really see it. I think on the project page, I think I told Drea to use maybe gray. But you choose what works for you. Okay, so this is, and you can hardly see this black thread. You can see it there, but not really. So I'm not going to worry about it too much. And you're going to keep going. Okay, so I'm going to do a couple more rows. All right, because I'm having fun with these. Okay, and Ger Gerald, thank you, Gerald, for the reminder. I'm going to tell you this. She's loving the Super Duo mixes that we have. And she opened her newsletter this morning, so you can see all of the goodies that we drop first, so you don't miss out. So thank you for that. So, oh, Drea said she put black. Perfect. Well, then she put black. And black, I think, works with everything. So now I'm going to go in my A dot, my super duo, down through that A dot, up through the next super duo, and down. Now my last one. A dot, super duo, through the A dot, and flip. Turning bead. 
super duo. I'm just choosing one maybe that I haven't put on lately. So I'm not, oh, whoops, turning bead. Then, sorry, I was getting ahead of myself. Turning bead. Now, eight dot and super duo. Through the eight dot, through the top hole of the super duo next to it, and tighten. So the pathways comes because this is kind of a little back and forth kind of herringbone pattern, like a herringbone pathway. And if your tension's weird, just pull on a bead, get that tension right, pull it down, and we'll keep going. We'll flip. And I always give, see how I gave that little bit of a tug right there on my, um, on here, right? So it kind of pulls everything down. So this goes, whoops, this goes on. That's my turner. Whoops, there. What's small? I've got that matte one. I haven't used a clear crystal one. These have the clear super duos, which I think are really pretty. I don't know. A super duo to me has a real like vintage feeling to it. All two whole beads say vintage to me. And maybe that's just wishful thinking because if you know me, you know I love A, vintage beads and B, vintage jewelry. So let me do a couple more rows and then we're going to tackle. I'm going to get my mind set on doing the closure. It's not that hard. It's just, I don't know why I'm, I have to think a little bit, but I'm going to consult Linnea's directions and I'm going to talk myself through it in front of all of you all good people. Okay. So this does have, Michelle is saying it kind of reminds her of kind of a checkerboard kind of a, a, a feel, but, um, you know, it, I think it really has uh, a really nice quality, especially with the matte and the transparent and the shiny and everything. Well, Lisa, uh, you mentioned your order, waiting for your order to arrive. Well, since you're over in the UK, you know, international shipping still takes some time. So whenever we ship to a foreign land, um, it just really depends. Sometimes it can take up to six weeks or longer. That's just the beauty of the postal service. But if you guys ever have, whoops, yeah, that's right. If you guys ever have any questions, just shoot us an email over at info at beadshop.com and we'll take care of you, okay? But we really appreciate your patience. You know, ever since the pandemic hit, you know, so many things have changed in our lives. Um, and supply chain and worldwide shipping are definitely two of those things. So we're just, um, we rarely, very, very rarely have a package go um, go missing. So, uh, we just have to have that patience where it comes in. So, but don't worry, we'll, we'll take care of it. So, um, hang tight, check your tracking numbers and they'll, uh, they'll come. Okay. If you order it, it will come. Uh, let me do one more and then I'll do the closure. It's probably a little bit short for um, a bracelet, but you could watch me do this super duo business all day and fall asleep. So let's let's get some action in here. Okay. So I'm going to put on my last super duo. Let me make it a different color. Let me finish up with this one. And so now we need to put in a row of herringbone. right here okay and then we'll put another row of herringbone and then two of the ladder stitch 
Okay. And yes, Leslie is saying she's going to put a photo of Bert posing for the camera tomorrow on the bead table. Leslie, it's so allowed. I think all of us are waiting to see Bert. So yes, please, let's get that Bert, that gentleman cat on the bead table. So let's go ahead and put our um, final, um, our final uh, rows of herringbone here. So what we're going to do is we're going to come in and we need to think about where our thread needs to be exiting. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a turning bead right here because our thread needs to be exiting out of that top hole of the super duo. So let me get this here, tighten this up and tighten this. Okay. So now, can you see that? I'm going to get my two herring bones, my two herring bone beads, and I'm going to go through um, I'm going to go through this A dot and that next super duo. Okay. Let's see if, again, let me make sure this is tight. And it looks a little funny, but it'll write itself once I get that second row in. And now I'm going to do the same thing. I've got my two. And we're going to come in and go through that final one right there. Okay. So see how they look the same like that. Now I need to do kind of that invisible turn because I need my thread to be coming out of that bead right there. So I'm going to go down and across and up. and up. Okay, so now we're just going to herringbone. I'm going to put on two and down and across to that next stack. And I'll get these two to this next stack. Okay. Now I need to invisible turn because I need my thread coming out of this one. And the, the instructions that Linnea writes are actually very good. So if you're not picking up what I'm stitching down here right now, have no fear. You're going to be uh, with this kind of as your guide. Whoops, that got caught. You're going to come in and I think I'm going to go right there um, and follow along with her photos. That'll be a good um, safety net for you with this. I'm going to bring it over right here. Okay. So now we're going to brick stitch. Let me just double check if there's any questions before I do that brick. Let's see. Great, lots of great. Um, and so Jermaine is asking, would this work using 11 knots and super duos? I think 11 knots are too small, Jermaine. I think um, the size of the A dot makes the right size so that the super duos lie correctly. You could try it, though. An 11 I ought might work with mini duos, which are super duos that are smaller. We don't carry mini duos, um, but you might have to size down both 
of the beads, if that makes sense. Okay. So let me get a little tighter there. Okay. So now we're going to transition to that ladder stitch, that brick ladder stitch. Okay. So I'm going to come up and I'm going to put my one, two, three, four beads on. Go through. Go up through that next herringbone. One, two, come down. through my next one, that next stack. And then I've got just one more stack to add on. Tighten up here. Tension, tension is important. Let me fix this tension. There we go. The other thing about seed bead work is I try and visualize the thread path in my head, if that makes sense because then it kind of starts to make sense to me, you know, if I'm visualizing the thread path. And also if I have to take pieces out, I'll know, you know, kind of, you know, how to unpick that thread path. I'm gonna go back in since I reinforced um, this end over here. I'm going to reinforce this. Okay. So let's just stitch it back and forth. In this way. There we go. And then to close this off, I mean, this is obviously a little shorty. Okay. And um, I would go ahead and I'll do that with this end right here. Let me take this needle. Let me get another needle, actually. What you can do is just weave this back through. And again, the handout, if you kind of lost it where the laddering happened, um, go ahead and take a look at that handout. You can download it. The pictures are super clear. And everything should be pretty clear for you. I'm just going to get my thread and I'm going to go down. This is my original tail that I started with. So I'm just going to come in and weave. I'm going to weave in like a square so the thread kind of crosses back onto itself. Some people tie knots and that's fine too. I'm not the knot police. So if you dig tying, you know, tying a, a knot in here, that's fine. I'm not gonna, there's no knot shaming here. I'm just gonna keep weaving. Right now in my other craft life, I'm knitting a fair isle vest because, you know, why not? And I'm actually, when I add on a new color in Fair Isle, when the traditional Fair Isle from Shetland, they tie knots to add the new color. So it's kind of this crazy um, thing. So I've actually tied knots in my color work, which is kind of crazy. You can follow my Insta. It's um, Bead Kate if you want to see more progress from that Fair Isle vest. But it's really fun to work with color. So see how I've woven that in. See that there? And I'm going to get a little closer here. And I'll come in and I'll clip this away so that's woven in.
Okay. So when you're sizing, let me show you here because this is obviously the wrong size. But as you're sizing here, what you want to do, and maybe I'll try and be inventive with this. Let's talk closure. Okay. So this length, like let's say that you wanted something that was kind of short because you could, let me see, where's my, there's my tape measure. Bear with me here just a second. This tape measure, this measures, I don't know, this is only about five inches. So I only have maybe about two more inches to go on here, really. Okay. So, um, so here we go, this length. But the, let me go through what the handout tells you. And then I want to look at a couple more ideas. Okay. So here, what we do at the end is on one end, you can see we've stitched a button on. So see how I've used the Ceylon thread, which I've got right down here. And I've used a big eye, not a big eye needle, but a, a flexible eye needle. And we stitch in some Ceylon there. And you just stitch it through the button. And you can stitch it through a couple of times. And then you tie a knot and you glue it down. And the handout goes into a little more um, detail. But basically, that's that. For the other end, we do a macrame closure. So see, there's about two inches. And I have fine here, though you could use regular. But I think fine is the right size. And you sew it essentially kind of like you do the button. But see how you bend that um, macrame in half. You thread your needle and you kind of go through like the super duos and stuff to kind of weave it in. Okay. And can you see here how one side is woven in, then the other side is woven in, and the tails are coming out of the beads. And you do that on both sides. Okay. Then what we've got, as you bring all of those strands together, Okay, so the, that your loop is nice and tight and your loop is actually sitting on the front of your work and you'll see that in a second. I'll, I'll bring that other photo back. But you essentially just bring all of those strands around and you tie knots down and you glue them. And once you've glued them, I let them sit and then you could use your thread burner to remove the rest of the thread right up to the knot. So you can see on the front side of this cuff how the macrame starts at where the super duo section and the herringbone section meet. Okay. And you could make this a little bit longer, right? A little bit of a larger loop if you needed to make your piece a little bit longer. Um, but I think that's really a beautiful um, closure and under the button and the loop, these two, your herringbone um, brick stitch section kind of overlaps like this. So you could make, like if I wanted to, I could continue this brick stitch on for maybe another inch here and another inch here so that this would have more of a strap kind of a look coming around. You could use, you could do a couple of things. If you didn't want to do that button and loop, you could also do a, um, that, um, that, uh, what do I want to call it? That crescent crimp, right? So my crescent crimp clasp, we have them from Tierra Cast on the website. That crescent crimp, do I have something where the crescent crimp is on it? Let me see if I do. My wall is getting full of samples, which is a great thing. 
Um, I need to bring a few more samples here. I don't have one here, but the crescent crimp is a crescent like this, and it's kind of open, right? So it, and then it has the loop here, right? But this inside, you, you would pull it down over your beadwork, and your beadwork would be inside it, and then you'd glue it down like that, and then you'd just whatever clasp you want to add to it, you would add, okay? You could also use, um, do like a seed bead loop. We've got extra thread here. So I could come up, bring it to the center. My, actually, I'd want to come down like this. Bring my needle up here. And I could stitch a button that had a shank here on the end. And then I could do a seed bead loop for the other side too, right? This crescent crimp though, I think would be cool, especially if this were gonna be a section in a wrap bracelet, right? And of course I'm getting myself in trouble here because I'm like, oh, wouldn't that be awesome? So I could have this be a section and then get some strap leather or get, I don't know, some, you know, just have it be a section. Like I've got one of my wraps right here. This was one, I can't remember what the heck it was called, but you know how I've done ones that have like the leather and stuff with them, right? So this could have a crescent crimp and then you could do something that maybe had knots across like this. Um, you could, you know, keep going with the leather. I forget which project this was, but, you know, you could do a wrap this way or you could connect strap leather. Um, and we could also, Lori, this is a great one too. You could do a seed bead loop and you could attach a toggle clasp or you could attach one of our, um, uh, uh, magnetic clasps is what I was thinking of the little, like I'm trying to remember the name of it, but we've got a couple of really good um, kind of smallish magnetic clasps that work really, really beautifully with, um, with these pieces. So that's it. You can decide how you want to close this off. You know, the, the bead is your oyster on this, but again, let me show you. I've got a couple of things on my wrist here, a couple of bracelets that I did. Emily did this piece with that large hold bead. I did one of those with this large hold bead. This is a piece that um, I designed uh, that I had manufactured back in the day. This is from the great bead extravaganza a while back, and that one's vintage. But when you do like the pathways cuff when it's a little smaller, right, this would look really would really nice looks really nice together in that stack and i love that purple i think it's a lot of fun um so width wise just so you know how wide that is it's about three quarters of an inch in width okay that's it that was called garnet gala thanks drea for that that was a fun that was a fun piece i don't think um Oh, that was the year-end wrap. Duh, of course it was, because it had knots. Um, it's under our year-end wrap. And so I used, I don't know if we have any of these buttons left, but I used one of those large ones like this. Okay. Um, Lori's also saying um, a beaded peyote toggle would be neat. I have that actually on my list because um, I've got some things that could use it. So hopefully I'll have a peyote toggle sometime around there. Okay, but this purple, these purple beads, I am really pleased. I love the colors of them. And again, the camera does not pick up um, the subtlety between the two matte purples, but rest assured, maybe if I lift it, you can see there's a little bit of a difference there that you can see it. Okay, so I hope you guys that this um, fired you up to use some super duos. You know, we also have our seashore project that uses super duos that I love. Um, we have some some 
earring projects that use them. Um, so they're a lot of fun uh, to play around with. So I would suggest just taking a taking a perusal through our Super Duo category and um, seeing how it all comes together, right? It's a lot of fun to, to play around and we've got a lot of really great basic patterns to go with those. So I hope you like them. So um, that's my story. I'm sticking to it. So let me, uh, here I am with my, with my fancy necklace. So there I am there. So I just want to uh, say thank you guys so much for watching us today, joining us on this free tip Friday. As you know, I go live every Wednesday and Friday at 1030 a.m. Pacific. And just a reminder for all of you all, um, go ahead and give us a follow on our social at beadshop.com. And if you do post on Instagram, give us a, a, a tag. Um, at beadshop.com, and we'd love to repost on our stories what it is you're making with our projects and our product. Jump over to Facebook uh, over at the Bead Table. We'd love to have you join us there. And if you are watching us on YouTube, thank you so much, either live or on the replay. Hit that like and subscribe button and turn on those notifications so you don't miss any of our broadcasts. All right, you guys. Well, next week I have a project. Um, I think it's next week. Drea, I think your project is up next week. I should have double checked before I went on, but we've got some fun stuff coming for you guys. Um, it's another one of those amazing cuffs that you guys are going to love. So I'll be back next week in office. I will see you then. Um, have a very uh, safe and creative weekend. And to all of our friends who are in harm's way, we are thinking of you and sending you our good thoughts. So hang in there, everybody. Let's think and hope for peace. That is the best of all outcomes. Thanks all. I'll see you next week.